Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different in the sense that we're not going to be doing so much live coding and talking about it. Instead, we're going to be having a little bit of a discussion of things that I've done here off camera. Uh, nothing too crazy. Again, all the code is available uh, on GitHub. Check the description or the playlist description for a link uh, to GitHub. And let's just jump right into it. Let's cover some of these changes here. Um, very quickly, the only thing that's changed in the network module was the fact that we have pulled out the product service into its own file here. Uh, that's why this one is green, so we can get rid of that, get rid of that. Colors.xml went ahead and kind of uplifted the colors here to kind of match, you know, the theme of the thumbnail and some of the other stuff there, so nothing too crazy there. Uh, styles came up with a, a little style here that we use at some point. We'll leave that one open. Um, and then realistically, the only thing that changed here in the build.gradle was the uh, implementation for coil, an image loading library that we're going to use inside of this application. So that's about it. Uh, we'll come back to the activity in a little bit, but realistically nothing has changed. And instead, we're going to really dive into the uh, the XML portion of today, like the design. And so when we look at this layout, I want to look at this in the, uh, the blueprint view to start, just so that we don't have the noise of all the other actual things inside of the text views and images. Um, but realistically, we can kind of see that there is some big view up here that contains a whole bunch of little views. There's a little bit of uh, another view down here. This is the description text view. Uh, here we have a big image view. This little thing in the middle here is a loading spinner. So we are actually displaying a loading spinner while the image is loading over the network. Uh, I believe this is a favorite icon. We have some other text views, a button here to add to cart, uh, and then something to display how much uh, you know, the cost of this particular product is. So if we flip over to the design, you can actually see now that this is kind of what it looks like, right? If you saw the post that I posted the other day, or the, the little picture that I posted the other day, kind of got a glimpse of what it was going to look like here. Um, we're going for this reasonable material theme, this reasonable, you know, rounded corner, rounded edges kind of feel. This thing is a full circle, very bubbly. There's a whole lot of elevation here. So just trying to make it feel like a nice, attractive looking application. Uh, for what it's worth, I did use dribble.com for a little bit of inspiration. They don't sponsor this video, but maybe they will at some point. Uh, but dribble.com, check it out. It, they kind of show you some different, you know, layouts and UI and design and stuff like that. It's free to create an account and then you can browse all the different content that they have there. And as we look at the XML here, we can kind of see uh, exactly how this is implemented. So imagine that there's going to be a big scrolling list of all these items. Uh, and so that this XML layout is going to represent a single item in that list. Uh, nothing too crazy here. We have a constraint layout that's match match. We set this uh, animate layout changes to true, which is actually pretty nice. A little bit of background color and that's about it. Then inside of here, we have our material card view. This is where a lot of the, the bulk of the actual UI is. Uh, we have a hard-coded height just to make things simple. Really not too much else there. We have some elevation. We have a corner radius here, which I've actually de defined as a, dimen a dimension here. Um, so if you are unfamiliar with this, you can, uh, inside of the res values folder, you can create something called dimens.xml. And it's basically just a way for you to keep resources, attributes that you're going to use pretty regularly. And so because I want to keep a certain theme around the corner radius, we can simply define that as a dimension. And then we can just use that in our XML files and even in our code if we need to programmatically to kind of give things all the same, uh, you know, rounded edgeness. Material card view is unfortunately always falls short of like needing to have a constraint layout inside of it because then everything in the card view we want to be able to place in relation to one another, right? At a high level here, we have our shapeable image view, which is this little image view here. The reason it's shapeable is because we can apply a style to it to very easily round the edges. Uh, we have a loading progress bar, again, that kind of sits in the middle of that image to kind of maintain good user feedback as the image is loading. Uh, we have a material button here that's defined this little like favorite icon, whether or not that's present uh, or whether it's favorited or not. Uh, then we have a few text views here to display some data. I believe that's the title, this little category, and the price. Then we have another material button that's down here to actually add it to the cart because we're going to simulate adding the things to the cart and kind of, you know, the, the normal e-commerce flow. And then there's another material button here that is this little green icon that 
toggles based upon if this element, this item, this product is in the cart or not. Outside of the card view here, the only other child or the only other relative that we have here is just another text view with this uh, description here. Um, and all of this data kind of maps directly to one of our product objects that we can get back from the API. All right, and so we're coming up here. You see that little bit of that loading spinner as our image is coming in. That is a uh, really helpful, really nice feedback. And then all of these different items here, as we click it, it kind of toggles whether it's favorited or not, just simply toggling in the UI. There's nothing actually changing here. As we go ahead and click this little icon or this little button here, again, we get this little icon to you know denote if it's in the cart or not. And then actually here, as they click the entire card, the description kind of goes away. So I actually think this will be the resting state, right? And then if they were to click it, it will kind of expand, quote unquote, to show this description here. Um, because again, there's going to be a list of all of these to kind of map out our different products that we have here. Um, so pretty straightforward. There's really not too much going on. If we want to flip over to the activity really quickly. Oh, uh, added in view binding. That's literally a, uh, a, a few lines of code here. Let me show you real quick. Simply just do build features, view binding equals true. It'll ask you to sync the project, you do that. And then afterwards, you'll have uh, your binding up and running. You can do the same thing for data binding, but it's just a different key instead of view binding. Um, so we set those kind of those things up pretty straightforward. And then I just kind of broke it out into two functions to clean it up because the onCreate was getting huge. But we refresh our data and then we set up our listeners. I want to pop over to the setup listeners function first because that's handling all of the different user interactions here. So uh, we have an onClick listener on the card view, and then we very easily just flip the visibility of the product description, which again is that little icon or that little text at the bottom, right? Uh, nothing too fancy there. The add to cart button does the exact same thing as far as flipping visibility for the in cart view, which is this little green icon. Very, very straightforward. Again, we're not really persisting any data. We're literally using the current value of the view's visibility and negating it to um, kind of flip it because is visible can just take true or false. Um, and in the true case, it's obviously visible. And then in the false case, it will set it to gone. So that's why we get this, um, you know, reasonable interaction that we're looking for. And then we do need a little bit more logic here for the is favorite. Um, this is obviously going to be like a field on the product item itself um, or somewhere else stored in our data. And then as we click it, we basically just figure out what is the opposite icon for the current status and then we set that icon and we flip our flag and that's how we just get you know oscillation here between favorited unfavorited very 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 standard very common stuff here uh, but did want to just kind of talk about this ui here um, and and kind of bring a little bit more attention to the xml side of things and and the actual design because that is super important when it comes to building something and building something you're proud of and looks good and all that stuff it's very easy to make something that doesn't look good um, so more or less, it's very difficult to make something that does look good. And uh, we take that for granted today uh, by today's standards. The only other function here, refresh data, looks very, very similar uh, to how the onCreate was, was initialized before. Um, but we have our loading progress bar at this point. We set that to visible. We do make our network call here. And when we get our uh, network call back here, we are then calling dot load on our image view. And dot load is an extension function that exists inside of the coil library. So that's actually extremely convenient because it just looks wonderful, right? It looks very, very simple. It looks very Kotlin-y, um, very 2022. So uh, coil is a pretty interesting library in that regard. Um, simply here, we can just pass the URL as this data string, uh, and then it will load it in. At the end here, there's something called an image request builder that you kind of have the ability to, uh, you know, attach additional requirements or augment the way something gets loaded. In this case, we're adding a listener to the actual request itself. And basically at any point in time, we don't really care what the result is or how the request operated. We just simply flip the flag here. We set it to is gone equals true. And then that removes this loading spinner there. So I'll run it again so we can kind of see it. If you pay attention to where that image is, yeah. Maybe we can delay it for one more second, just so that it gives you a little bit more time to uh, to take a look at it. All right, and there we go, it's loading up. And yeah, it takes a little bit more time, kind of nice. Needed it because 
as we saw in the last episode, it was a little unreliable as far as the API. Sometimes it took a little longer to load. Um, so point is, I don't know if we're actually gonna keep it, but point is that we do have that user feedback, which is really, really nice. As I mentioned here, this style earlier, um, we can make use of this style. You see this shape appearance overlay app corner round. Uh, I mean, that's just the name that we gave it. That's kind of the name that was, it was in the article, but you can name this anything. There is no parent here, but what is interesting is that you can define particular attributes and how you want them to be and display. And then, you know, you can just reuse this style and apply it to views where these attributes make sense. And so it's a little difficult to see here because of the images, but you can kind of see that things start to round in these corners. However, it's actually a little bit easier to see when there is no image in there. So as it's loading in, you see that nice little rounded edges, you know, that has that little like pinkish purple color. It's a little difficult to see with this one, but that is because of this uh, appearance here. Obviously we set our corner family to rounded. Um, and then the corner size here, again, making use of our at dimension, uh, the corner radius, that 12 dp value. And then we can very easily see how this is being used inside, let me close a few things here, uh, inside of the shapeable image view. We can actually apply it as an attribute here, the shape appearance overlay. We reference that style, and then this just takes on what we want it to be, right? Um, this is really, really nice and really powerful because traditionally you one of the easier ways to actually get an, uh, an image view to be rounded is wrap it inside of a card view. Then we're starting to nest our layout a little bit more. So we're trying to obviously be as efficient as we possibly can from a layout perspective. This is pretty damn good if I do say so myself. So take a look at the, uh, I don't want to go through line by line here with the XML. So, you know, you could pull it down from the GitHub repo and take a look and I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, but it is, you know, there's a lot going on here. As you can see, there's, there's 157 lines of, of code here. There's a good amount of stuff to explore. But anyway, if you made it this far in the video, I would really appreciate a like. I'd really appreciate a subscription. If you are brand new, consider sharing this with anyone that you think would benefit from it. And I'd really love to get your feedback in the comments. We obviously can change course um, if it's a comment that isn't too ridiculous to accommodate. Um, and if it does make sense, that would be great. Uh, but otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Enjoy the day. Have a good week. I'll see you.